Bill Deshay talking to you from the Pacific Northwest BI Summit in 2012. And I'm here today with Bob Eve. Bob is Vice President of Marketing for Composite Software. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about virtualization, Bob, right? Absolutely. Lots of changes in the data integration space, lots of changes in the analytics space. What's happening with data integration right now? Well, it's really changing a lot. Um, you know, this proliferation of silos is just happening uh, all over the place. We have cloud sources, we have big data sources, the analytic appliances that were just coming into vogue five years ago have proliferated all over. Yep. So the idea of the enterprise data warehouse as being the central core of data integration, it's just not there anymore. And I think people are realizing that something new is going to be required. Now, what is it? Um, what we see people doing is doing more of a layered approach. So kind of a different kind of a focus and uh, putting a layer between those sources and uh, those consumers and trying to work that data integration challenge in a different way. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what are the functions of that new layer? Well, I think if you think about it from the consumer side, it's really to provide simplified information access. So provide them some freedom to find the data they need and then use whatever they want to report it. Excel, Tableau, ClickTech, uh, you know, show it in a portal, um, whatever they need. Um, and below that, from the data, data side, bottoms up, is really provide IT the freedom to move the work to the best uh, resource possible. So maybe it should be on an, the data should be on an analytic appliance. Maybe the data should be in Teradata. Maybe it should just stay in the original sources. But let IT figure that out. That manage that based on the workload. And really, then you have the business users with freedom to use, get at the information they need and then use it however they want, and then IT can just service that in a, in a consistent fashion. That's perfect, and you're letting the systems do what they were built to do, which is you know refreshing and nice, right? Well, and plus with all the new technology, uh, both at the consumer side and at the, uh, at the data source, there's, there's a lot of freedom, a lot of choices, and people should have the flexibility to do exactly. that. As you say, you let the systems do what they're, what they're best at doing. Exactly, and so are companies doing this today? Absolutely. Yeah, I, this morning at the BI Summit, I talked about a couple of our customers. Uh, one of them's Pfizer, and they're using us in the research area for new, new products. Yep. And uh, really, a, you know, a thousand people gathering and using information, project information, uh, scientific experiments, what's going on. And to the extent they can use that information to shorten the product uh, development cycle, that's just, you know, money in the bank. Um, one, I talked about one of our oil company customers of their upstream uh, activities. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is a big uh, believer in this sort of uh, uh, an architecture and these, these sort of products. You know, they have uh, putting in a layer in their system of all the trades, all the orders, wow. all the receipts, quotes, it's called Torca, let me get yeah. them all, quotes, cancels, admins, and provide just unified access to all that information to a whole bunch of different systems, whether they're regulatory or just performance management. Yeah. Lots of executives watching this video, they're all going to be wondering about the value proposition. So what are some of the benefits of this? Well, it's a great question. Um, yeah, because why do anything if it's not going to provide value? Yeah. And I think the, the, the best uh, value proposition is that we're able to provide that information in order to do that risk management, in order to pull that uh, uh, product uh, development in by a year and, and uh, bring, uh, instead of 10 years, nine years to bring a new drug to market. That's a huge value. So just the value of the information itself is, is, is one aspect. Time to solution is much faster in this sort of approach. If you think about the enterprise data warehouse or our traditional approach, we have to define the schema, do the mapping to the sources, write the ETLs, and then check, did we get it right? Yeah. And getting those three things right and consistent takes a while, and you iterate yeah. and iterate and iterate. In, in the approach we're talking about here, you build, really build views. Yeah. And as everyone knows, when you build a view, you kind of can run it right away and see what the data is. And so there's many fewer parts. Yeah. And shorter that path length. Shorter yeah. path yeah. lengths, st more streamlined. And oh, by the way, what happens when it's more streamlined, shorter path length, fewer moving parts? Yep. Costs less. Yep. So you get your business value of your solution, you do it much more quickly, and you do it for less. Yeah. So that's pretty powerful. So when you're advising companies, whether you're your, their prospects or your clients, what are you telling them in terms of where to start? Yeah, I think one of the things is just step back a little bit and realize these big trends are going on and start thinking as an architecture. Really, what should you be doing? How can you think layer as opposed to maybe everything was enterprise data warehouse centric alone? Yeah. Not that those warehouses will go away. They're very important and they're just a source to the layer. Um, so start thinking about that architecture. I think you can get outside help. Um, we 
follow, there's been some great research by Forrester in terms of data virtualization. Uh, Gartner calls it the logical data warehouse. Some real brand new research from Mark Beyer on that. Um, EMA, Sean Rogers, the hybrid data ecosystem. So there's, there's um, third party analyst uh, uh, reports. And then look at, see what real companies are doing. We, we have a book that has 10 case studies in it, pretty great in depth. Yep. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and I'd say over half of those are doing this very complex layered approach uh, and making it work. So you can kind of learn from that. We have some videos and case studies on the, on, on the website as well. So uh, a lot of, lot of ways to get you know, pragmatic information. So if you start with that right information, I think you'll do fine. Perfect, and your website, Bob? www.compositesw.com. Another place to look is DV Cafe. That's mm -hmm. kind of a fun, fun place, a little more um, uh, iPad experience yep. for uh, seeing what's going on in data virtualization. Fabulous. Well, you know, when we talk about data virtualization and data integration, one of the things that is subtext is that it's infrastructure. But what we've been talking about here today is data virtualization, data integration, as business solutions, as part of an overall business solution. So congratulations on that. Congratulations to Composite. This is Jill Deshay and Bob Eve signing off from the Pacific Northwest BI Summit 2012.